Hey friends, Pastor Bill Walden here with Build Up the Church. Hope you're doing great. A couple of thoughts for you out of the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 9, verses 22, excuse me, 20 to 22. Jesus was walking through a huge crowd. It says, suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind him and touched the hem of his garment. So she was, she had vaginal hemorrhaging for 12 years. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. A lot of moving parts in this uh, scene here. The other gospels tell us that this woman had spent everything that she had with physicians to, um, to help her get better, but she hadn't. She'd only gotten worse. Ceremonially speaking for the Jewish uh, women, that would her condition would have made her ceremonially unclean, which means she couldn't go to synagogue. Socially and, and religiously and ceremonially, if she touched anyone, they would be defiled until the end of the day and they would have to go through some ritual baths. She wouldn't have been married. She would have been an outcast. And in those days, oftentimes the Jewish people would think that if you had some kind of physical affliction, that you must have done something wrong, some sin against God, and God was punishing you by giving you a physical affliction. And so there were so many moving parts in this scenario, so many, so many things stacked up against the woman, outcast among her own people, physically drained, obviously anemic, um, having to constantly care for herself in a very embarrassing situation, lonely, maybe even, maybe even uh, separated from her family because of her condition. She came up to Jesus in this crowd and said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. Now, the, the Jewish men in those days would wear four tassels on the corner of their robes to remind, them, to remind themselves and others that they were Jews. Her desire to touch the hem of Jesus' garment was superstitious. There was nothing in the Bible that says that you were to do this, and yet she had faith. We might say it was an awkward faith. It was a strangely expressed faith. It was an unorthodox expression of faith. Jesus didn't care. She had faith. She fought through the crowd, actually ceremonially defiling people at that time. But she was desperate. She didn't call out. Maybe she didn't feel like she deserved the attention or was embarrassed in case she wasn't healed, asking for a miracle and it wasn't going to happen, perhaps. And yet she did have faith and she fought through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment. And it says... Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he, this is what he said. Now, Jesus didn't just heal the woman. Be of good cheer. Be glad. And then he said, daughter. Jesus cares about the whole person. The modern word is holistic. Caring about the entire person, body, soul, spirit, emotions, psyche, everything. Jesus cared about this woman, so he didn't just heal her. He reestablished her as among God's people. He, he, he announced, you're in the family. If there were any there that knew of her condition, they would have thought she wasn't part of the family. But Jesus is restoring her into the family, both for her benefit and for the benefit of others, that they might no longer think of her as an outcast. And then he said, your faith has made you well. It, it wasn't uh, coincidental that suddenly the bleeding stopped. Jesus wanted her to know that it was her faith, not somebody else's prayers, but her own faith that brought the healing. Jesus was the source, and he wanted to make sure that she knew that the healing had come from him so that her faith, as awkwardly as it was expressed and as unorthodox as it was expressed, was real and placed in the right person. And then he went and took her by the hand. Excuse me. Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. Jesus didn't just restore her body and then leave her physical condition in question to any of those who might have known. He pronounced her daughter. He said, you're well. He said it was faith. There's no, there's no 
uh, misunderstanding what has just happened. You're okay now physically, and you're back with your people, and you're back in society. To take it even further, now you are marriage material, if you will. Nobody has to stay away from you. If your family has abandoned you, let them know that you're okay now and that it was Jesus of Nazareth that made you well. Jesus is restoring the whole woman. This is so wonderful for me because obviously we are not just body. We are not just soul. We are not just psyche. We, we have all of those things. We may not get healed in this life, but we certainly will in the next if we're followers of Jesus. And Jesus begins a healing work in everybody that trusts in his name. And once again, you know, except for the return of Christ, we're all going to die. There's going to be one generation that will be alive when Jesus comes back. Other than that, we're all going to die. But we're not going to stay dead. We're just going to be alive in another place. Jesus is the holistic holer, healer, excuse me, holistic healer, body, soul, and spirit. And as he is announcing this woman's healing, he's restoring her publicly to anybody that needed to hear about it. And he is restoring her on a personal level. I don't know what the Lord wants to do with you, but that's the Jesus of the Bible. And, and he truly deserves the word awesome. Thanks so much for watching. God bless you. This has been a January 12th, 2024. Kind of keeping a record of these things in case you want to check. Thanks. Bye-bye.